All right, it is that time again where I talk about what I played last month. And despite everyone being so sure that the only game I'd play in May would be Tears of the Kingdom, I am here to tell you that I actually played more than one game last month. I played two. So <laughs> let's get into what I played in May. As Tears of the Kingdom didn't come out until May 12th, I originally planned to use the time before its release to replay Shovel Knight and all of its expansions, but due to poor time management on my part, I only ended up making it through the base game. But even just playing that reminded me that there is just so much goodness to Shovel Knight. It nails that old school 2D platformer vibe in a way that both pays homage to what came before and also feels fresh. There aren't many games with as much polish as Shovel Knight, and even though it's almost a decade old, it still feels monumental in so many ways. It is a testament to the timelessness of certain ideas and titles, and I will never not be impressed by what Yacht Club accomplished. Every stage is expertly crafted, and there are so many ways to utilize the various items to get through them as efficiently as possible. Despite its linear nature due to all the tools at your disposal, there is still a ton of player freedom. On top of that, all of the boss fights are stellar, and it has an all timer soundtrack. It just feels so good to play. Shovel Knight obviously is a very popular indie game, so you probably don't need me to tell you to play it, but I'm going to. Honestly, if you haven't played Shovel Knight yet, what are you doing? Just play it. It's too good to be in your backlog still. I promise it's worth it. The rest of my month, of course, was spent playing Tears of the Kingdom, and to no one's surprise, I loved it. As the experience is so fresh, it's hard to say where it ranks amongst my favorite Zelda games and just games in general. There's always a lot of hype right when something comes out, which can skew my feelings on it, and it also can just take a while until I fully understand the emotional connection I have to a thing. So with all games I play, I like to give it some time to settle into its proper spot before making strong declarations like it being the best of all time or anything like that. What I will say though is that I don't think I've ever been as consistently impressed while playing playing a game as I was while playing Tears of the Kingdom. I also don't know that I've ever had more fun while playing a game. Going in, I expected it to be better in a lot of ways than Breath of the Wild, but not have nearly as much of an impact on me. But I am happy to say that I was wrong about that assumption. Despite it being the same Hyrule, despite knowing the modern Zelda formula and the tricks Nintendo likes to pull out of their sleeves, it gave me the same feeling I had when playing Breath of the Wild, which I thought was impossible. It improves on its predecessor in most ways, although I do want to be clear that it's not better in all ways, which is an opinion that I've seen going around a decent bit that I think is kind of goofy. But I get why people are so excited about it. There's just so much to this game, and I can pretty much guarantee that I will be talking about it on my main channel for the next ever. As for this video though, I'm just going to start dropping a bunch of various thoughts that I have about Tears of the Kingdom without much rhyme or reason. As it's a long game and has only been out for a short amount of time, I'm going to avoid talking about the story and major discoveries I found as not to spoil anything meaningful. I will talk generally though about stuff like the dungeons as well as the structure of the world, so if you haven't played it yet and care about not knowing anything about the game before going in, then I don't know why you click this video. <laughs> it's clearly about Tears of the Kingdom. What, what are you doing? Leave. Get out. Go. For the rest of you though, here are some of my thoughts. One thing I and many others were worried about when Nintendo said they'd be using the same Hyrule was that it would be too much of the same. You'd just be retreading the footsteps you took in Breath of the Wild. But I actually found the reuse of the map to be one of my favorite things about Tears of the Kingdom. As I had a familiarity with its layout and a connection to the various places across it, I found a lot of joy moving from place to place. Where in Breath of the Wild, I found myself asking, what's that over there? In Tears of the Kingdom, the new question was, why is it like that over there? The changes that are brought about by the upheaval added a mystery to nearly every location, and in almost every instance, it was a mystery I felt drawn to because I cared about this Hyrule. Like, the fog around the Lost Woods being far thicker than normal meant something to me because of the connection I had made to the place when playing Breath of the Wild. The history I had with Hyrule made every interaction more interesting. I wasn't saving a world that I didn't know or remember, I was saving one that I had already spent an entire game saving. And I found this approach to be super rewarding, and it led to me exploring just as much as I did in Breath of the Wild, if not more. Obviously though, part of this is just because there is so much more to explore in Tears of the Kingdom, as along with the overworld, there are also the Sky Islands and the Depths, the latter being nearly the same size as Hyrule. 
Hyrule itself. Overall, I found both these areas to be awesome additions. Like, I love that the three layers you explore all call for you to traverse them in ways that differ greatly from each other. The sky islands and the depths give a new level of verticality to the game, and I had a ton of fun going from layer to layer as I moved around the world. It always feels like there's something new to explore. With that said, I do wish there was a bit more to both the sky islands and the depths. This is especially true for the sky islands, which do have a handful of really fun activities, but aside from the starting area and the dungeons, most of the stuff in the sky is not all that substantial, and too many of the puzzles up there had the exact same solution of making a plane with the supplied parts to fly to where you need to go. I wish there had been a couple more big areas in the sky with different activities to engage with. As for the depths, between Zonite and the various gear spread across it, there's always a good reason to explore and engage with pretty much everything you come across. Also, some of the best quests in the game are found down there, so I don't want to complain too much about it not having enough stuff because there is plenty to love. But given the sheer size of it, I did find myself wishing there had been a few more meaningful and massive structures to explore down there that yielded some unique reward. I understand that it's not meant to feel as densely packed as the overworld, but I do think they could have filled it a bit more than they did. I guess my point is, the depths are awesome, but they could have been better. Which in fairness, saying that something could have been better is a statement that pretty much applies to everything ever. Jumping to how the game rewards players, in general, Tears of the Kingdom does a much better job than its predecessor. By introducing the fuse mechanic, players are incentivized to engage in combat way more, because the best way to create a strong weapon is by gathering monster parts. I am a long time defender of the weapon durability in Breath of the Wild, but it obviously wasn't perfect, as players were often better off avoiding combat to save their weapons. But this change largely fixes that. It makes combat more meaningful because it always rewards the player, and I found myself fighting way more enemies than I did in Breath of the Wild because of it. Tears of the Kingdom also just has a lot more stuff to collect. Gone are the days of everything you engage with being a shrine or a Korok, and a lot of the new things give you pretty useful and fun stuff. Now, the rewards aren't perfect. Perfect. Pretty much everything you come across will fit into one of the major categories of collectibles, and while this is usually fine, I do wish there were a few more unique rewards to get. Like, there is nothing quite as deflating as doing a long and intriguing quest line that promises mystery and intrigue, only to be given a heart or stamina vessel at the end of it. Again, this feeling isn't one I ran into a ton, but it happened enough times where it stood out, and I just think the game would have benefited so much by including rewards that are unique to specific quests. Quests. And like, it does this a few times, but it's usually weapons that break, and I think instead of that they should have given weapons that recharge or something along those lines, or upgrades to Link's core abilities. Also, in regards to the various bits of gear you find across the world, while I do love the inclusion of them, I think it would have been nice if there had been a little more fanfare around finding them instead of it just being something you can stumble across. Now, my least favorite reward in the game is the one you get for beating the dungeons, the Sage's Vows. And it's a shame, because the vows and sages in general are so close to being really cool, but instead feel clunky and too situational to be useful. For the most part, I love how the sages operate within the dungeons themselves. It felt similar in a lot of ways to classic Zelda dungeons that require you to use an item to get through them. I will say, it would have been better if their abilities had been needed for the vast majority of puzzles within the dungeon, but in general, it felt like a step in the right direction in order to bridge the gap between old Zelda dungeons and the Divine Beasts. All in all, it's a really cool idea that may not be executed perfectly, but is still pretty enjoyable. Outside of the dungeons though, with the exception of Tulin, they kinda just get in the way. Given that you have to be next to them to activate their power, it is difficult to make their abilities a regular part of your arsenal. When trying to use them, I felt like I was always chasing them down instead of actually fighting enemies. Also, I don't like the way the avatars look. It felt goofy having a little blue guy following me around everywhere, especially because I like like the feeling of loneliness that both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom evoke, and having a spirit fly in and out of me constantly kind of killed the vibe. In fairness, one of the themes of this game is that Link is no longer alone, that he has friends by his side whenever he needs them, which is obviously why Nintendo included the avatars, but I don't think having lifeless ghost-looking versions
versions of your companions does a great job of creating that feeling. I think it would have been better if they just looked like they normally did. I ended up turning them off for pretty much my entire playthrough as I prefer to not have them running around all the time. And while playing that way was preferable for me, it did make it so beating the dungeons didn't feel nearly as exciting. I pretty much lost out on a reward because I didn't have a practical reason to use it, which kind of sucks. I found myself missing how the champion abilities worked in Breath of the Wild, and I really wish that the sage abilities had been more like those, by being bound to specific inputs on the controller instead of to the proximity of a character. Now, aside from that, I really love the dungeons in this game. I do think they all could have benefited from being a bit longer, but it was nice to return to some interestingly themed spaces and also have proper Zelda boss fights. There was a cohesion to the dungeons that was really nice and didn't come at the cost of abandoning the design philosophy that I love so much about these games. As for the major mechanics, Link's new abilities are all really cool and offer so many options of how to engage with the world and puzzles. I truly feel like I barely scratched the surface of their potential and I definitely can see myself jumping back into it just to experiment with them. While not every puzzle in this game is created equal, I did find the majority of them to be satisfying to solve and given the flexibility of Link's abilities, the solution always felt unique to me, which I really liked. It just always made me feel smart and creative in a way few games have ever been able to do. Lastly, and I won't give any specifics about it, the end of the game is incredible. After beating it, I immediately watch back the recording of my last hour and I plan to go back and play through the final section again because it is just so cool. It is easily my favorite ending to a Zelda game and probably just behind Outer Wilds for favorite endings of all time. I don't know that it'll hit everyone in the same way as it hit me, but man, did I just enjoy the shit out of it. I have way more thoughts about the game, but I don't want this to turn into a massive review as that's not really the nature of this series. And also I want to save a bunch of my thoughts for videos I plan to make about it on my main channel. So I'll leave it with this. Tears of the Kingdom is the most impressive game I have ever played and I've never had an experience like it before. Playing it gave me a sense of joy that no other title has. It tries a lot of things, many of which work really well, but obviously, especially due to its scope, it has plenty of shortcomings. I've seen some people say they don't know how it gets better from here, and I am in the opposite camp. I think there are so many ways to improve upon the ideas both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have established and explored, and that's what's so exciting about it. These two games are two of my favorite experiences ever, and there is so much untapped potential within them. This approach to game design can be done so much better, and I am beyond excited to see talented developers, whether it be Nintendo or someone else, continue to iterate on the ideas that make these games so special, because I want to keep having amazing experiences like this one. Yeah, it's really good. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. See you next time, unless I decide to stop doing this. Bye.